Later that evening, the topic of my skiing skills, were by no, uh, which were by no means perfect, was brought up at the kitchen table. And the question was whether I wanted to go with Christian on a cross-country excursion next uh, Sunday, uh, as was uh, the customary for those children who had fathers. I hesitated, not least because I was puzzled by the encouraging tone tongues with which mother met the invitation. What about Linda? I asked. She's too small. Is that is it that far? Not at all. I ended up saying yes. I had I had said yes too often in my childhood. It was only later that I began to say no, not that it helped much. And for some reason we had to depart uh, at the crack of dawn at half past seven on skis. Christian looked alien and strange in white anorak and oddly antiquated uh, nickel bockers, and he was very tight-lipped at the freezing cold as the freezing cold day broke. Uh, the ro- uh, in Lochtesvain it was alt- uh, alternate gravel and ice, so even if, if it was downhill all the way, I was already wrecked by the time we arrived at, uh, at the railway station at 5 to 8. The train was packed and silent, a slumbering a slumbering mass of men of all ages, only men, as if in thrall to a national solemnity, an army on its way to the front. And we had to stand, so I didn't get a chance to recover, but off we set in the biting cold, and there were good trails, and it was nice and flat on the ice on the lake. Thereafter, however, the nightmare began, the ascent. On the other hand, when we were up top, it would be plain sailing, panted Christian, at its lowest step. The thing was, we never got up top. It was just like walking up to the moon. I was merely a quivering shadow of myself when at length we, sw- we swerved into the into the forecourt of Sinobor, the first restaurant, a wondrous sight in the crystal clear winter landscape. But for some reason, we were not going there. We couldn't believe my ears. We were going on to search Gavin. We made it too. By the uh, by the skin of our teeth, but by then I was such a wreck I had difficulty swallowing the black currant toddy and waffles that Christian treated me to. I went to sleep with food in my mouth, and when he shook me back to consciousness, I asked if he couldn't stay the night. Ha ha, he said, turning to the waitress. The boy's asking if he could stay the night. Hmm, fine thing that will be, the woman said. I had a misfortune, misfortune to bump into one of my pals here, Roger. He was an excellent skier, but, as luck would have it, he was with his elder brothers, so we were almost equally red-faced, sitting there, mute with exhaustion, beside each other on the shiny, worn wooden bench in the stuffy room, reeking of wet clothes and wet men and rucksacks and bark and berries and spruce and all the Norwegian outdoor smells I have always associated with a combination of poverty and fathers. As luck would have it, Roger was dragged out before me. But after, after we had had our fill and all the waffles and the toddies, we could not stay where we were, however much, however much I begged, taking up a room from a constant stream of groaning, of groaning of horse crashing in through the door with loud voices and swaggering pitch seam skiing boots with steam and sweat and ice and snow and indefinitely and indefinitely thick storm clouds of breath that they had gorged like greedy sharks for kilometers after kilometer through the frozen reality, only to release the whole fullness here in this much too cramped pressure cooker of a primitive shack. The great Norwegian winter beast, the bear that never sleeps but slashes and claws and makes an infernal racket alone and with others so as not to freeze to death. All these all the things I had missed because I didn't have a father. In short, there was nothing for us but to set out uh, and struggle on, unrelenting. An extra layer of wax all right then, but it wasn't the, it wasn't grip that was the trouble or the glide. It was my physical state. I was now so stiff and frozen after the merciless baking from the wood burner that I was uh, regurgitated regurgitating baffles and black currant toddy the whole way down to Lilset. Christian had to dispense sympathy and scorn to keep me upright for kilometer after kilometer. But by the time we arrived in Lilset, this last station on our social socialist democratic Via Dolorosa, 
it became apparent that we weren't stopping here either. I had definitely regained my body heat and got shot off the food. On, the, on top of that, Kristen had come a cropper a couple of times on the slopes down to Lake Bresham. I felt too, but his nose dive was a more thoroughgoing affair, more time consuming one might say. It must have been something to do with age and philosophy. Christian was not the type to fall. He was more likely to determine himself when he would take a tumble. And here natural forces had got the better of him. But when at long last we hung trembling on our poles at the slope of Orvalosen, skinting down towards the rifle club and Astrain, at least his smirk was gone. Not just that, he had a brand new expression on his modern face. I think it must have been bitterness, even though he managed to force a grin and said that was something he wanted to talk to me about. Did I think my mother would mind him having guests in his room? An unusual question to me, and it wasn't until there had been a bit of, of hemming and hoo and hailing that I realized a lady was involved. Did I think uh, uh, she would be allowed to stay a few days? I answered that and doubted it. I thought as much, she said focusing his gaze on the hall in which Oslo lay. What is it that she wants, he mumbled. A son cannot answer that kind of question. It wasn't even certain that it was uh, that he was referring to mother. But then he said, and what's up with that uh, uh, sister of yours? Is she retarded? I heard the drums all begin in earnest, and so rainbows, uh, rainbows wreck uh, uh, my, my field of vision. I gasped for breath tightened my grip on the sticks and set off, managing to stay on my feet the whole way past the rifle club and down the road. But of course, he caught, up again. he caught me up again and knocked me flying into the snow. For Christ's sake, Finn, you don't understand a thing. The lodger had turned into a monster. I, can, uh, I could do nothing but close my eyes and be strong.